you like beer? Do you like podcasts? Do you like beer podcasts? Then check out Cracking One Open, a podcast about brews, news, and pop culture reviews. Every week, we crack open a new craft beer from breweries around the country. And sometimes the world. We'll talk about how it was made, what's in it, the history of the brew, and the brewery. Then we'll give our tasting notes, and while we're finishing up, we'll talk about some of the latest goings-on in the world of pop culture. So check out Crackin' When Open with Mike and Elise, part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. Hey, Field Hang 10. Watch out for a new wave of episodes for Forgotten Cinema Season 9, Forgotten Summer. Ugh, really, Butler, a theme season? Let me guess, we're going to talk about films that were released in the coveted summer months that for some reason seem to be forgotten by audiences. You know it, bro. What we liked about them or maybe didn't. But we'll always recommend people check them out. Maybe they'll find their own Forgotten Summer gem. So check out Forgotten Summer wherever you get your podcast, part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. Hold on, gotta catch this wave. We're sitting at desk in the recording booth. Today's episode of Bohemian Geek Studies is brought to you by Omeo. Omeo is a travel booking platform that makes planning a journey in Europe or North America effortless. Just enter your travel details and Omeo will magically give you all the train, bus, flight, and ferry options for your journey. It's never been simpler to book your first real vacation of 2021. Best of all, using Omeo saves you time and money. It's a win-win in our books. Omeo wants to help you leave your house this summer by offering 5% off your next booking. Just head to omeo.com and use the code LISTENER5 at checkout. Valid until June 30th for new users on all modes of transport. It's just the pick-me-up that your 2021 needs. Omeo. Plan, book, and love the journey. Terms and conditions apply. at the well-rounded table to bohemian geek studies where we take extremely dorky dives into our favorite fandoms and also hello there (laughs) i'm colleen mcmillan jedi master and rebel scum collaborator and i am pirate jedi anders drew but no matter what rank you carry one thing will always remain constant much to learn we still have it's so true lots to learn these episodes too lots so many things potentially everything Potentially. Mm, Oh my, so many questions we have. (laughs) So this season on Bohemian Geek Studies, we're taking our detailed jerky dive into Star Wars Rebels. Mm, 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 mm. Today we're diving into season three, episodes three and four, the Holocrons of Fate, in which we talk about holocroning yet again, and the Antilles Extraction. We have done our best to scramble our signal and we will be avoiding spoilers for future episodes of Rebels, but I will throw out an adult content warning for the younglings. Lots of holocroning going on. So without further ado, let's hop on board the Phantom and try and shake Maul off our tails to pick up some new pilots as we explore our holocrons of knowledge. Colleen, punch it and open that first holocron. Ooh, here we go. All right. First holocron is the Journal of the Wills, in which we go over the plot of the episodes with the synopsis and the summary. Our first episode is the Holocrons of Fate. It begins outside a wrecked Hammerhead Corvette that Ezra and Kanan board. There they find a wounded rebel crewman who warns of a red blade. Shit. (laughs) Which turns out to be the deliciously devilish Maul, I'm always here for this, who has taken the other Spectre's prisoner. Not, Not a great look for Maul, though. Maul wants the Sith and Jedi holocrons and to spend a little more quality time with his apprentice, Ezra. Aboard the ghost, Maul asks for a tour and Hera obliges. That's Apparently, putting it very lightly. Yeah, a tour, a forced march through the ghost. Even though he is pretty astute here, noticing that it's their home. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, this is a home. I have never had one of those. How lucky for you. <laughs> Poor Maul. He's always just out there coveting what other people have. These parts were kind of funny, though, when he's like, apparently Ezra and Zeb's cabin has a curious <laughs> spell. <laughs> like, that's actually pretty it's a teenage boy and a, uh, and a and a Lasat that's very smelly in and of himself. <laughs> a curious smell. Next is Sabine's cabin, which is quite colorful. Apparently, he's not a fan of the colorfulness. Who knows? Maul is very strange. And then, of course, Kanan's is dull and dour, just like a Jedi. We don't get it's... to see Hera's. I was kind of disappointed in that. No. I would like to see Hera's cabin. We never get to see it. I don't think. Maybe we get to see it like a split second, but it's not really yeah. like much. This is where Maul uses the Force very forcefully in this situation and discovers the hidden Jedi holocron in Kanan's bunk. 
Back on Adelon, Ezra and Caden arrive searching for Bendu. Bendu doesn't know Maul, but he's familiar with his kind, being the Dark, for- dark Side users, mm-hmm. and cautions them against combining the Jedi and Sith holocrons together. Now, he, at the same time, he doesn't stop them from taking the, the Sith holocron back. No. No. <laughs> eh, you just, but they got to go get it themselves, which is currently hidden down deep in the nest of Krikna spiders. These goddamn spiders. Can we, can we put them in the past? Nope. So long as we're on Adelon, we're going to see the fucking spiders. So Kanan sends Ezra into the spider's nest without his lightsaber because he needs to start learning how to solve problems without it to retrieve the Sith holocron, much to Ezra's displeasure. Flashing back to the ghost, Maul is very frustrated. He is completely unable to open the Jedi holocron. He is attempting to force it open, and it will not yield. Mm Mm-hmm. While he struggles, the Spectres manage to escape the bonds that he has them in. And because his Maul is half droid, they activate the magnetizer in the cargo hold, which pulls him onto the cargo bay ceiling. But he does manage to escape again, and he is now very pissed as he locks them yes. back up. Like, very, uh, very. They just made him angry. That's, yeah, it was exactly. not good. <laughs> like They poked the bear. They did like nothing to him. <laughs> Also, I don't know why. Like, I don't know why I've never thought of it in in those terms. I've never thought of Maul being half droid. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, mechanical legs. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I I don't even know if he's half droid, really. I don't think he counts as just, half droid. Right. I think that's just like them. Echo saying, might like, be half droid at this point. But... Yes, Echo would fit that title way more. Mm-hmm. Maul's more like cyborgy. Yeah. Like, he has droid parts. I mean, I guess technically if he has droid parts, he's half droid. <laughs> Freaking pre out here just giving Maul legs. It was such a bad decision. <laughs> but that was the Clone Wars. Back on Adelon, Ezra is navigating through the dark Krikna nest because, of course, he is. Kanan tells him to go to the left. Of course, he goes right. Mm. And is soon surrounded by several spiders. And he loses contact with Kanan. Kanan heads into the cave to assist Ezra. Thank you. Like, yes, thank you. Why didn't you just go in there in the first place? Because Ezra didn't want him to, but that's neither here nor there. Just go in. So, you know, he goes in. He finds Ezra. He's like, freaking take my hand. And Ezra's like, hesitates a little bit. Like, what are you doing, my dude? Like, just jump up there. What are you doing? Ugh. Much to Ezra's astonishment, Kanan uses the force to calm down a spider and sends it away. Afterwards, Ezra apologizes to Kanan for quote unquote everything, which means everything that happened on Malachor, basically. And Kanan reassures him that what happened is not Ezra's fault. Outside, the Bendu senses their reconciliation and smiles. I did like this part when he's like, they're mended now. Yeah, they found their balance. (laughs) Everything's fine. Ezra and Kanan finally find the Holocron and Ezra uses the force to levitate it over to them. Then they travel to meet Maul, who pushes Kanan out of an airlock after being a huge dick to him. And then, like, apologizing for blinding him, which is weird. Like, Maul, is, he's got some weird energy going on in Rebels that I just love. I mean, there's it's, there's always, like, those villains who, like, also, like, kind of grudgingly respect you in some way. So they have, like, the little, the little banter, being like, oh, mm-hmm. sorry about that. Yeah, I'm still going to yeah. kill you, though. Yeah, I'm totally still going to kill you, because if I don't, Ezra will not be my apprentice. Right. <laughs> like he knows that Kanan is a huge threat. So he's he gonna just, he really just wants to gaslight Ezra into this whole apprenticeship thing. Yes, he totally does. He yeah, every single thing he wants is to get Ezra. Fortunately though, Kanan uses the force and propels himself back into the hangar bay. Whew. After catching his breath, Kanan heads out to save his friends, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Now Maul has secretly ordered his droids to completely terminate the prisoner and lies to Ezra that his friends are safe. Now, mm-hmm. I guess you could... He at that moment, thus, they were still safe. At that moment, they were still safe. Like uh, One thing to say from all is that he tends not to actually lie, mm-hmm. at least not to Ezra. Right. <laughs> Ezra and Maul kneel together on the floor, preparing themselves to open both the holocrons. Ezra expresses his desire that he wants to know how to destroy the Sith. Maul replies that he is seeking only hope. Mm-hmm. The holocrons open and fuse together, bathing the room in a brilliant purple light. This was a beautiful, so cool. beautiful shot. Mm-hmm. 
Um, just as the tour guide droids are preparing to execute Hera Sabine and Chopper and Zeb, Kanan comes in and he beheads them without delay. And they all run to make it to Ezra and Maul. Bathe in an absolutely brilliant light, Maul says he can see, quote unquote, him. And Ezra is trying to figure out what he's seeing. He can't quite make it out, but he sees twin sons. Kanan warns Ezra, who listens to his master, closes his eyes, and manages to get out of this absolutely brilliant white light. And all of a sudden, the bright glow disappears, the holocons separate, and have now been destroyed as the rebels are knocked out by the shockwave. Mm -hmm. Maul manages to flee, laughing really to quick. himself. Yeah, very quick. Again, well, droid there. legs. Droid legs. He I does mean, have the droid legs. Yeah, that doesn't actually <laughs> expend any of his energy. <laughs> um, but he's like laughing to himself pretty maniacally that he lives. Yeah. He lives. He lives. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone around the twist for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> before departing aboard the Night Brother. When Kanan asks Ezra what happened, the younger Jedi tells him he saw images of places both unknown, but also some kind of familiar. He doesn't know if it was what he wanted to see or what Maul wanted to see, or like a mix of both. Mm -hmm. Kanan reassures Ezra that they're going to find out, but they're going to find out together. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're not alone anymore. They're there for each other. Yes. Each other. Yay. <laughs> yay it's so cute i love them both okay next we have episode four i really like this episode too i do too i love i love, love a certain character a lot it's so good like sabine is amazing in this episode it's fantastic yeah i love this getting is the, the antilles extraction yes and i like that season three chooses to go more into her character like mm -hmm. we're gonna get to see so much more sabine stuff and i'm very excited yes. for that and this is kind of the jumping off point of sabine doing her own missions and sabine being equal to Ezra, which is like, yes, yes, please bring it on. This episode begins with a dogfight in space, and TIE fighters wipe out Rebel starfighters and a transport, which is unarmed. Like, they just shoot an unarmed trans transport, that's fine. Mm -hmm. At Chopper Base, Commander Sato explains that they've been working on a solution for this, like, losing all their pilots with Fulcrum. We got that's a new done. Fulcrum, everybody. One of the Rebel Rebellion's informants. And then we have Fulcrum informs the rebels that there are some Imperial cadets at Star Strike Academy who want to defect Yay! and need assistance to escape. Sabine is chosen to do this mission. She travels to the Academy disguised as a Thai pilot cadet. Yes. I also love, I love the, uh, the argument, like Ezra tries to put up an argument, like it should be me. I've done this before. I've gone into the Imperial Academy. And they're mm -hmm. like, eh, this is a little bit more detailed than the last time you went in. Also like, all of, yes. all of the Empire knows your face now. <laughs> and in the protocols, and she'd be familiar and easy to kind of yeah. infiltrate and get herself inside. We have Imperial Instructor Gorin, mm, this fucking guy, addresses the cadets and tells them that they will have a combat practice simulation the next day. For the exercise, the ties have to intercept and destroy four simulated Y-wings, after which fellow cadet Wedge Yay! Yay. <laughs> He's my favorite. I love Wedge so much. And Sabine are ordered to destroy a rebel transport. Ugh. Despite Imperial protocol to the contrary. Before they can destroy the rebel transport, the two pilots hesitate because they're good people and are destroyed by a freighter called the Ghost. <laughs> I love that they're using the Ghost in their simulations now. <laughs> Fantastic. Wedge tells Sabine that she's brave in breaking protocol. But she replies that she follows her gut instinct and what she thinks is right. I saw like this was like a really interesting callback to just a few episodes ago when like Ezra was being like, no, leave no witnesses, like take out everybody even after you've disabled them. And mm -hmm. Sabine was not comfortable with that back then and she is still not comfortable with it now, which no. good for her. Good for her. Good for Wedge. Wedge mm -hmm. also out there breaking protocol telling his name when they're only supposed to use their yeah. call numbers. <laughs> Like, cut the chatter out there, Wedge. I mean, mm -hmm. tie by that number, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit later on, Governor Price and Agent Callus arrive. Callus informs Goran that the ISB has information some cadets plan to defect to the rebels. Speaking of, Sabine catches three cadets, Wedge and his two friends, Hobby and Rake, arguing about something risky. Later, 
Sabine meets Weds in the Thai hangar bay, and they confide in each other that the simulator exercise is not what they signed up to be pilots for. Now, granted, you signed up to be TIE fighter pilots. What the fuck were you expecting? Um, right. When Wedge expresses some desire to leave, Sabine comes clean and tells him she can arrange that and reveals her true identity and the fact that she is, in fact, there to get him out. Yep. Back on the CR-90 Corvette, Ezra is really anxious about Sabine's safety. He is not comfortable with this. Fortunately, Sabine meets with Wedge and his friends in the corridors, and together they contact Ezra and tell them they're ready to make a break for it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when Ezra arrives, his presence is immediately detected by Price, Callus, and Gorin. Mm -hmm. This part is really cool. Like this actually was a it was a really good escape plan, and it was a really good anti escape plan. Like yes, nobody did anything wrong really here, with tactics wise. Like everybody was firing on all cylinders for this. Mm -hmm. At Sabine's signal during the practice flying, the four cadets break off from the main group and fly towards the Corvette towards Ezra. Goran, Callus, and Price detect this, and Price deduces that they have their defectors. Mark, mark, mark. Price orders Captain Scaris, fucking Vault oh, Scaris, we'll talk about yes. him later, really? to destroy one of the pods, killing Rake, which is really sad. Very sad. Really glad that they didn't shoot Sabine. <laughs> like, yeah. That totally could have happened. Like, mm, so not be good. Back at Star Trek Academy, Sabine, Wedge, and Javi are brought before Governor Price, who demands to know which of them is the rebel agent. Just before she is about to torture Wedge, mm, Sabine confesses. It's so sweet. Mm -hmm. I love Sabine so much. Price recognizes her as a runaway Imperial cadet. Hmm, interesting. Price a little bit smarter than I think we're giving her credit for. Price is very smart, which is unfortunate for our rebels. Because yeah. <laughs> they're used to dealing with fucking Constantine, who is an idiot. <laughs> Somehow he's an, ad an admiral, but I mean, yeah, fucking Constantine. And then, of course, they're dealing with Callus, who is very intelligent, but didn't have as large of a network as Price and Thrawn have at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Sabine escapes. Great. I love it. She fights Price. It's amazing. She knocks out the governor and rescues Wedge and Hobby. So cute when they're like, oh, we were going to come rescue you. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah, good try, boys. Good try. Pursued by stormtroopers, the trio run down a corridor, dodging past several blast doors before they're being halted by one closing. Another blast door closes behind them, cutting off their escape route and also cutting off the approaching stormtroopers. Enter Agent Callus, comes out the side door, telling Sabine not to shoot. Interesting. Very interesting. What the hell is going on? So Sabine asks, her to, asks him to give her like one good reason she shouldn't just shoot him. Mm -hmm. And Callus tells her how to escape. Sabine is really suspicious now and asks him why, why in all the worlds and all the galaxies should, she tr should they trust him? I mean, this right? is ISB Agent Callus here. Mm -hmm. Well, Callus <laughs> tells her to tell his boy Zeb that they are now even, mm -hmm. and he helps the trio escape. Bros gotta help, bros. Bros gotta help, bros. You know, nice little callback to their uh, their time cuddling for warmth on that mm -hmm. ice moon. So Sabine, nice <laughs> Sabine, and the defectors flee in a very slow Thai bomber. <laughs> At least it fits all three of them, though. Yeah. Uh, and with Wedge at the helm. Fortunately, Ezra arrives, despite the fact that Sabine had told him to get out of there and don't come back. Uh, and the rebels have their new recruits, and they head into hyperspace. Back at Chopper Base, Sabine presents Wedge and Javi to the other Spectres and Commander Sato, who welcomes them to the Rebellion. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. I do love that Wedge says he can fly anything. Very Han-esque. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody in this universe who's a pilot is like, yo, I can, if, if it's got it, if it, if it flies, I can fly it. Mm -hmm. Gotta have that good flyboy pilot energy. <laughs> yeah. And if it exists, Sabine can blow it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we are now going to move into our second holocron, The Will of the Force. This is where we discuss mm -hmm. the themes of the episodes and of the series. Colleen, start us off with that episode theme. Yes, so we've got episode three. Our theme for this one is understanding and finding balance. Kanan and Ezra are forced to find balance within themselves and within their relationship in order to calm the spiders down. Like they can't have any internal conflict, they can't have any external conflict or the spiders are gonna flip the fuck out. 
oh spiders can we not yeah <laughs> can we just not please we also the see the is there for a reason i know like, <laughs> please just don't do this we also see that the holocrons find power in balancing each other out like ultimate knowledge interestingly only comes with the light and the dark yeah like you can't have one without the other you can't have if ultimate one, knowledge if without one is the going other. to understand the force in its entirety you must embrace a larger view exactly or at least know and recognize both sides which ezra is very good at mm -hmm. which i hope we see more going forward with him and then we have episode four god i love this episode <laughs> recognizing right from wrong like come on most of the tie pilots and most of the imperial cadets are just like all right i guess we're just gonna go with it like yeah. Not all of them should, can be as morally right or as morally good as when Hobby and Biggs, Darklighter also, who defects from an academy. Most of them are just regular people who signed up to be soldiers and probably don't really know what the Empire is doing. They're just soldiers. Hmm. But these guys, the pilots, kind of get this from their simulations. Like, you want us to blow up civilian transports. Like, that's a rough. disabled civilian transport and also i mean going back to that in that particular right. situation okay they blow up the transport the ghost is still showing up and shooting at them like whether or not right. they had blown that up exactly that was still part of the simulation yeah the ghost still would have come so i think it was kind of like not as hard maybe as the kobayashi maru but it was made to kind of make them fail and Possibly. it was it's a teaching tool i mean they are trying to teach the tie pilots to follow orders like that's basically what they're trying to teach them yeah they're trying to be like follow our orders this may seem like it's a transport that has no weapons or whatever but here comes the ghost <laughs> <laughs> something with weapons will come i think is what they're trying to teach them yeah how about our series theme what do we got so back into our lovely series theme, the chosen family and for this we really start to see it's several small moments but we're really starting to see a sibling bond come up mm -hmm. and we get some really just amazing sibling moments from ezra and sabine here they haven't really had a chance to do much other than uh just kind of banter in the in the first couple seasons and mm -hmm. don't get me wrong the banter is hysterical yes. but here we see the bond really starting to form they are very worried about each other sabine wants him to get himself out she wants him to save himself ezra is sitting there and he is so worried about his sister and kanan's like there is absolutely nothing you can do about it you have to sit and wait and you have to have faith you have to trust in each other yes and to see that really come see them just ultimately come through for each other the way siblings always will do in the end Yes, it's so sweet. Their connection, I I do ship them, but only when they're older. So this is the part where it's like, yes, they're actually building the relationship and learning to trust each other. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's move into that third holocron, the galaxy's populace. This is where we discuss mm -hmm. the characters and the relationships highlighted in, in today's episodes. Colleen, let's start us off with our adorable little space Aladdin, even though he doesn't have the Aladdin hair anymore, and I'm still upset about that. <laughs> A lot of people were really upset. About <laughs> Ezra's hair, guys. Let's be fair. It probably is easier to animate when it's shorter. So that's one reason they did it. I don't mind it. I do miss his floppy hair, but this, they wanted him to look edgier and older or Ezra wanted to look edgier and older. Let's yeah. be fair. So first we're going to start out with Ezra's relationship with Maul, which is like, oh my God, Maul initially calls Ezra, quote, our apprentice and quote to Kanan. But then he switches pretty quickly to my apprentice. <laughs> like he throws out an hour, hour there. <laughs> and he's like, no, this is no, no, not no. like there. <laughs> That's not how this is going to go. Maul thinks that Ezra belongs to him now. Like this isn't a negotiation here. He actually does think that this is his apprentice. And his motivations in this episode are mainly about finding out what's in the holocrons, but also to get Ezra away from his family. From his connections. Maul says that he's loyal to Ezra, which is true from a certain point of view. Maybe. From Maul's point of view, he is. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But poor Ezra really has no choice in this episode but to go along with Maul. He's 
driven also by his need for knowledge. Like he could have said no. He could have been like, no, we're not going to connect the holograms. That's dumb. Like, why would we do that? But he's still thirsty for this power in order to defeat the Sith. Like he still wants this. Yeah. And that's another reason that Maul thinks that they're connected, like that they would be a good master apprentice pair. They probably because, would be. That's right. They probably would be. It's another kind of Maul Ahsoka situation where they really would have been more equals. I don't think like Ezra would not have let Maul be like, I'm the master and you are the apprentice. She would have been like, ha 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 ha. No. <laughs> that would not have flown very well. But yeah, the relationships that Maul has with Ezra and Ahsoka are very interesting. Like I think that's where most of his character development mm -hmm. comes out. And we're going to see more of that later. Yay, more Ezra Maul. But now we have to look at our actual master <laughs> apprentice pair, Ezra and Kanan. So throughout the first episode, we noticed that Ezra was always trying to get in front of Kanan, like either to shield him or to help him. Like he's helping him along at certain points or he's moving in front of Kanan very quickly, like, cause he's the eyes. Mm -hmm. he, he can see, Kanan can't. He also told Kanan to stay out of the spider's cave. <laughs> like, no, I'll be fine. Please don't bring your blind ass in there. He's wanting to protect him, which is very sweet. Even though Kanan doesn't really need it. Like he does a little bit, he does lean on Ezra, which is really cute, but I don't think he needs to. <laughs> I think no, he doesn't, fine. but he's, he's, he can, he's making Ezra feel good. You know, he's he boosting can, the confidence a little bit. He is, he's making Ezra feel like he's needed, like that he he needs him, which is very sweet. And also very un -Jedi like <laughs> yes. Like Kanan, Kanan and Ezra's relationship is so adorable. And then we have their relationship, like it's finally mended. We finally get to see them forgive each other. Ezra forgive himself. Kanan forgive himself. Like he mm -hmm. has to forgive himself too for neglecting Ezra basically for six months. I mean, it's, it's very understandable why, like he's the one yeah. who became disabled. He's the one who has to live with his disability and learn how to navigate through the world differently. So it's understandable that it took him a while to come to terms with that. But then seeing them reconcile and hug is just so sweet. I'm it here really for it. Mm -hmm. I'm here for all of it. How about our main man, Kanan though? Yes, but our main man, Kanan, I mean, he at this point has just, he's managed to let go fully of what happened to him on Malachor and mm -hmm. he needs Ezra to see, he needs Ezra to see that he's done that 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 it is actually okay he's okay with who he is now with what his limitations are or what new heights he can push himself to mm -hmm. and he needs he needs Ezra's trust back Ezra has spent a little bit of time basically thinking he can't trust his master and Kaden shows up just how capable he still is in this episode doing mm -hmm the whole fly through space thing long before Leia did her Mary Poppins moment in The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. precedent for it, people, just shut up. Yep, Kanan did it first, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Taking out Maul's droids with very, very surprising ease. Mm -hmm. And we also, we get a drop. We find out that Kanan is not his real name. No. We find out he is actually Caleb Doom. Shouts to Caleb, shouts to young Caleb and the Kanan Yay. comics and yes. the Bad Batch opening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kanan, Kanan actually gets his fake name from a character in the Kanan comics. He flips the letters, but he's basically names himself after the guy who saves him, mm -hmm. which is really sweet and adorable. And of course, a tween would totally do that. And Absolutely. His name from his, the guy who saves him. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Sabine. God, we love her. She proves to be capable on her own, as well as with her ghost team in this episode. Yes. She finally gets her own solo mission and she carries it off so well. Like her infiltration is fantastic. She does everything by herself. She finds the people she's supposed to find with relative ease. Like she found the yeah, right just way. Just by keeping her eyes open. Yep. She's very observant. She listens. And she builds up relationships with people really easily. She didn't panic with the uh, the identity card? Yep, didn't panic. She totally just blew through it. She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a video game cartridge. This is fine. And her plans were all really sound. Like, Price is just very capable as an adversary. If it had been anyone else there, she probably would have gotten away the yeah. first time. But Price <laughs> was there. So she did not. 
I love that she's able to recruit two pilots, one of whom is probably the most important rebel pilot besides Luke. Yes, and that I, pilot is Wedge she, Antilles. She recruits, she recruits Wedge Antilles woo, woo, into woo, the Rebellion, woo, woo. the only pilot yes. to survive both Death Star runs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the Exegol <laughs> mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, Corellian born Wedge Antilles first appeared in A New Hope, one of mm-hmm. the few pilots who did survive the Death Star. Mm-hmm. He's integral to the Hoth battle in Empire Strikes Back. He assists with Death Star 2 and Jedi. Oh, yeah. No slouch. He's probably one of the best non-force user pilots in the galaxy yes. him and Hera who you got yep oh Hera's probably better mm-hmm. I think Hera actually can fly anything <laughs> like Wedge can but his specialty is all right what about him and Nora Ooh, I think they're very equal Nora is a Y-wing pilot <laughs> I think Wedge has especially in legends wedge is like this amazing pilot like he he gets called the best pilot in the galaxy very often like better mm-hmm. than luke people think he's better than luke. <laughs> and he probably would be if luke weren't force sensitive mm-hmm. i mean luke has a lot of that going for him whereas wedge has none yeah and he, he's an incredible pilot like and a great leader i love wedge <laughs> Wedge. So and much. here we see him and Hobby. They become disillusioned with the Empire. They thought mm-hmm. they were going to just be pilots and do some good. Again, though, like you signed up to be fighter pilots. What did you think? Like, seriously. I thought they just thought they'd be fighting rebels and militaries that wanted to be bad. <laughs> I mean, they're teenagers. What do they know? Yeah. <laughs> and then during training, they come to the realization they are just cogs in a very ruthless machine. Mm-hmm. which is good nature mm-hmm. and his humor are an amazing addition to the rebels cast it's so cool to have him there and should be seeing him again hopefully i love him <laughs> yes. now this episode was originally intended to be about biggs dark lighters defection luke's mm-hmm. friend from tatooine yep. uh but it worked better with the timeline to have it be wedge mm-hmm. and poor hobby's real name <laughs> god poor hobby his name hobby. is derek clivian mm-hmm. sabine just doesn't actually learn it <laughs> in this episode no love when she's introducing them she's like and hobby <laughs> wedge antilles and hobby <laughs> poor derek it's always derek always gets the shaft oh and next we have hot callus <laughs> i love callus so much this isb agent out here helping rebels what the hell is going on with him Ooh. great look for our guy squaring his debt with the sub while also helping out sabine we're really glad now that zeb didn't choose to kill him on that ice moon i mean even if this is an isolated incident like at least he helped sabine out once mm-hmm. he's like tell gareth Aurelius that we're we're clear yeah. now he like snaps and, walks <laughs> <laughs> and sabine's like that's weird but all right yeah <laughs> like, when did they meet because <laughs> i'm sure zeb did not explain what happened on that no, ice at moon. least not in full Mm-mm. Uh, and then lastly, we have good old Governor Price. Oh, Rinda, you bitch. Her, I hate her so much. She's, such a, uh, she's not quite as brilliant a strategist as Thrawn, but she does know her stuff. She successfully foils Sabine's initial escape plan and is a pretty good hand-to-hand fighter. Now, Sabine mm-hmm. just happens to also be a Mandalorian, so good luck winning that. Yeah. Um, Mm-mm. so <laughs> yeah she's been fighting sabine has been fighting hand to hand since she was in diapers if yes. they have diapers in star wars <laughs> yes basically that's what she's been doing like price doesn't learn how to fight really until she's in like her late teens early 20s mm-hmm. in the first thrawn novel she's learning how to do hand to hand combat and she's good like she oh is yeah good. and she's dedicated to learning Mm-hmm. And she's for an imperial, especially, especially a fucking governor, because they're the bureaucrats really aren't out here learning how to defend themselves. No. So it would be very strange for a governor to be able to do this. Next, moving on to my favorite section. I love this. We have our fourth holocron, which is binding the galaxy together, our homages and Easter eggs. For this holocron, we explore the homages and Easter eggs from our episodes. There's a lot today. There's a lot going into these. A yeah. Lot of in-depth stuff going on here yeah let's start off with that spider's nest the cave sending Mm -hmm. ezra in the insistence that he goes alone very very empire strikes back tree of darkness Mm -hmm. or tree of insight whatever you want to call it that dark side tree vibes going on here now when he went in luke still definitely took his weapons with him but kanan has a little bit of a firmer hand than yoda does and was like no give it here (laughs) 
<laughs> Give me the lightsaber. That's right. Fine, Dad. I'd rather have my lightsaber, but all right. <laughs> so cute. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. All right. Next, we have oh, our dude, Maul. <laughs> Yield to my power. Oh, my God. Yield. That dude. Yield. He's invoking the principles of the dark side that we saw in Malachor from trying to force open the Sith holocron like doctrine into the ruins like he's he's trying real hard to get into this into the Jedi holocron yeah. here but it's it's just not going to work the same way you have to be able to access the light side you have to let it open on its own and yeah it's not going to bend to your will like that is one thing about the Jedi is that they don't bend to mm-hmm. people's wills usually they're very steadfast in their beliefs yeah and the holocron is no different like you can make a Sith holocron bend to your will you can't do that with the Jedi nope and I mean speaking of things you can and can't do I can't even do that Ezra (laughs) is amazed that Kanan is able to connect and calm the spiders calling back to his pretty advanced empathic ability to connect Mm -hmm. the fact that he couldn't do this with the spiders and that Kanan can is very significant to him Mm mm-hmm it's kind of wild. It like really is. Not being able to do this and Kanan being able to. And you just know Kanan sitting there like, I got this. I got this. I can communicate with the spiders. Yeah. Good for you, my dude. So awesome. You had help, though. Like, Bendu helped you. So <laughs> calm down with your awesomeness. Next, we have Maul's ship, the Knight Brother. I do like that he calls it the Knight Brother. Like, he's trying to embrace who he comes from. Mm-hmm and his past instead of calling it like something Sith because he's not a Sith anymore. So he's not really going to name it something Sith like, but he could have chosen a different name for it. But instead he chooses to be like, this is who I am though, guys, I'm a night brother. <laughs> night brother, possibly the last one at this point. Uh, it's close. I don't know if there are any left on death and There might yeah. be a couple. I'm there's like one night sister left. If, unless she's dead too. <laughs> from Jedi Fallen Order, like she could be dead. We don't, we don't know. No, no. We don't know yet. Maul could be the very last of his kind, at least from Death Mirror. There are other Zabraks out there, but he would be like the last Knight Brother. His starship is a gauntlet starfighter, which makes its Rebels debut in this episode. It's got that like slinky black and red coloring, which I do is like unusual a for the ship. Yeah, it looks great. Like the, his starship looks amazing. They're usually blue and black for the Death Watch, which is where these ships come from. It first appears in the comics. This is a Mandalorian Comark class fighter and a transport, Mm -hmm. which like Bo-Katan loves using these in Clone Wars. Yeah. I love these ships. They're great. They're a great ship. Really cool. Yes. And speaking of the Mandalorians, that rendezvous Maul chooses is called Vizsla Keep 09. It's an old Death Watch supply base that is makes its first appearance in the Son of Dathomir comics. Mm-hmm. Taking all the Vizsla shit. <laughs> Maul's just taking. Oh my god. He references that to, to Sabine when he's like, I used to rule Mandalore, so you should really be happy that I'm here. And she's like, son of a bitch. He did. And Zeb's like, really? <laughs> You're like, unfortunately. We don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk. <laughs> we choose not to talk about the time we accidentally made Maul our ruler. <laughs> Twice. Once again, thanks, Pre Vizsla. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my God. Maul's a busy guy. Next, we have our twin sons. The answer to how to defeat the Sith involves twin sons. Hmm. Hmm. Where do we know that has twin sons? And could have Maul saying to himself, he lives? <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard to decode. <laughs> I don't even think it counts as a spoiler <laughs> to really talk about this, but we will not say it outright. <laughs> we will not. We will not. We will not. <laughs> we can theorize. We can theorize. I mean, it won't take much. Yes, there are many binary sun <laughs> systems out there. <laughs> but how many do we really know or care about? Yes. All right, and then we have Fulcrum's back, mm. but it's not Ahsoka. So Fulcrum mm-hmm. gets described as a code name, goes to many undercover operatives and informants, which mm-hmm. kind of helps better to confuse the Empire. Yep. 
Yep. Uh, it's mentioned in the Aftermath novel that Wedge has a connection to Fulcrum, and readers assumed at that point that it was Ahsoka, but Rebels tells us that that might not be the case. Mm -mm. It would be kind of cool, though. I would love it would to be see cool. Wedge meet Ahsoka. That would be great. She's getting a show. I know. <laughs> I want so many things that were not resolved in Rebels to be resolved in that show, and I have a bad feeling that's not going to happen. <laughs> at least not in season one. Yeah, at least not in season one. Please, Lord, give us some answers. Next, we have the Sky Strike Academy. Mm -hmm. This ship is first mentioned in Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the first Thrawn novel, of course. It's an elite training academy for pilots. Like, this is the Top Gun situation. Yeah. This is where the best of the best go. It's the first time we've seen it on screen, and it appears to be the same model super tanker as the Colossus from <laughs> Resistance. I love the Colossus. I love the Colossus. And you know what? That place That's was a cool also show. a great place for uh, some, some ace pilots. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, they have a lot of space, so it's easy to store yeah. all the fighters and stuff. And next up, we have Callus's line to tell Garo Zeba relevant. Tell Gera Zebarelius we're even. So that is a nice little callback to Zeb and Kalis's like little romantic date on the ice moon. Um, br oh, <laughs> bringing that, paying off that that episode. It wasn't just like a random side quest. It actually has significance for the series moving forward. And significance for the characters. Like I really yeah. enjoy that they didn't just drop it. Like they're like, oh no, Callus remembers this. Like this mm -hmm. is actually integral to his character like he's been probably thinking about it for a really long time at least six months or longer since the end of malachor like he's been thinking of i owe a lasat <laughs> like something a rebel I, at oh, that. oh god <laughs> i owe him something here we go we got one thing i let you live mandalorian girl mm -hmm. and pilots good job good job callus we're gonna give you one on this and then last, we have Volt fucking Scaris. Mm. I do enjoy this character, though. He's interesting to have. He's an ace fighter pilot. Like, he is the actual, like, ace of the Empire at this point. He has this, like, big Tom Scarrett, which I kind of wonder if they named him after the character <laughs> Viper from Top Gun, because he's kind of got the energy. He's got the mustache. He's, like, ordering them around and trying to tell them, like, to follow the rules and to go along with stuff, even though he's with the Empire and Viper is obviously a good guy in Top Gun, they still have that kind of like tough guy, bad cop energy when they're teaching. Trying to have some BDE, but not quite pulling off. Yes, although Vi Viper kind of does. I think Scarus does, but it's kind of difficult when everyone else is like, the rebellion so you're not going to be able to kill these characters yeah no so it's not like you can head out there and kill everybody he, he just can't he is that good of a pilot he's got this kind of cool horned insignia on his helmet it's originally used from an atst walker from empire strikes back it's kind of curious like why they put it on the ace pilot but all right we're gonna go for it and this insignia is on the kenner toys of the walker too which is really fun Scarus is mentioned as an elite pilot in the Thrawn novels, as well as the Alphabet Squadron novels. He shares similarities with an elite pilot from Legends, who is one of my favorite <laughs> Legends characters, Baron Sutterfell. Love him. Please bring him into canon. Please, Lord. Whose TIE Interceptor has a similar kind of painted pattern. Interesting. And this is also unusual for TIE pilots to be individualized. Very true, Scar yeah. Scarus deserves this ranking so that's why he has the different tie fighter i think that's going to close us out for homages and easter eggs before we move on to our next holocron though we'd like to tell you about fiverr do you need a freelancer to help with your website either a designer or maybe you need someone to help write expert articles and blogs or an expert presentation designer to help with that big work project look no further than the number one freelance marketplace fiverr you can find designers, programmers, and more within seconds. Some for as low as $5 per gig. Fiverr is the ideal tool to help with pressing projects. Just post your gig or search for freelancers and you're off. Don't deal with the hassle of finding freelancers by yourself. Let Fiverr help you. See the link in the show notes to get started. Please note Bohemian Geek Studies is an affiliate partner of Fiverr. We may receive commissions on purchases and services you buy after you click the link. 
These commissions help support the growth of BGS and we appreciate your continued support. All right, everybody, we are going to move into our fifth holocron, the newbie from Nebu. This is Flo's first time watching Rebels. We're in season three, getting into things. We have tasked her with watching the episodes and giving us her questions and her takes. So let's see what our ambassador for Nebu thought of today's episode. Hey, it's me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um... Two very like, different episodes very different. To, to really yeah, come into. Very different. And I'm like trying to remind myself of like what happened because I didn't feel like they were super action packed. Okay, but I still like, okay, well, let's just get into it. Okay, episode three, The Holocrons of Fate. Done. Good title. I'm going to yes. start with that. Yes, really good very title. good title. Yes. Starts off, we see this really cool astromech droid that has a clear top, and I was really yes. into that guy. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. I was like, this is cool. Like, I like seeing how things work, so I thought that was cool. I was surprised to see Maul again so soon. I feel like that felt unexpected. Yes. I hated what he said, our apprentice. <laughs> hated that. All right, he segued into my really quick. <laughs> I did not like that one bit. Um, also, like, keep Kanan's name out of your mouth, Maul. Like, is this the first time that we learned that Kanan Jarus is not his real name? Yes. I think officially, yes. Okay, yeah. so I feel like I already knew that somehow, just, like, through Star Wars knowledge. Just, but it yeah, was, from talking to us enough. <laughs> yeah, just from talking to you guys a lot. Um, but I feel like it was cool to hear it. I feel like they didn't go into it at all. So I'm assuming they're going to go into it later. But it was kind of weird to just like drop it here and then like never talk about it again for these, at least these next two episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that, that was kind of strange. Okay, here's my issue with Maul in these. And I don't know if it was the voice acting or the <gasps> like. No being here. made to Sam Whitmer, first husband. <laughs> Sorry. Or I, I didn't have an issue like. I don't have an issue with the voice. It's just, to me, it sounded like Maul was extremely rapey. Oh, yeah. He's got that weird Sith mm-hmm. creep factor energy. Like, yeah. it was real creep. And, like, I know people say that, like, Anakin is super creep in Attack of the Clones, where he's like, I'm sorry, milady, or whatever. Oh, no. Know? Maul is meant to be this. Like, I mean, he's this using is, like, this. scary. Yes. It's yeah. very scary. So that, like, really freaked me out. I was just like, I feel really uncomfortable and i felt like i felt like he was very rapey to hera Mm -hmm. definitely i I was like super uncomfortable with like what was happening here he's trying to break her so he can get into her head easier yeah i mean yeah i just felt like it was like breaking her like in a sexual way like when he was like you're gonna show me the ship i was just like Mm -hmm. this is how a very scary like book starts Mm-hmm. And I really was uncomfortable. And I was like, this is a kid's show. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a kid's show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That, I was just like uncomfortable. And like, I felt weird that like nobody could protect Hera and mm-hmm. she couldn't even like really protect herself in a lot of ways. And so Not like from all. Yeah. yeah. I just felt like everything was very helpless and it made me really, really uncomfortable. When he was like over all of them, and he's like, "You will stay alive as long as you are yeah. of use to me." Yeah, yes. that was really scary. He's so scary in this episode. Such a hostage situation. Like, yep. Mm-hmm. And we were right into scary. it too. Like, I, I, when we yeah. watched this episode, I couldn't yes. remember the last there, yeah, time I had some... watched it that we don't see him like break into the ship and do it. He's just already there at the start. Right. Yes, mm-hmm. he's just there. It was scary. I, I was really nervous, for, especially for Hera and Sabine. I just feel like as like a woman, I was just like, this is my biggest fear. Yes. Like, this is it. Mm-hmm. So that was really scary. Let's go into something lighter. Yes. <laughs> Why does Ben do have the weirdest laugh I've ever heard in my life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did you guys note this laugh? It was the worst laugh ever. Uh-huh. I did not know the laugh. It's really strange. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's got this weird laugh. He's, he's I, clearly, rusty on communicating. <laughs> he has no people skills whatsoever. And yeah. my, my next note just says Bendu is annoying. I really do not like Bendu, I've decided. <laughs> like, that was so unnecessary. He's just, he's just really unnecessary. He's I thought he wasn't going to give up the holocron at first. Oh, no. He, he doesn't no. give a fuck. He's like, sure, go for it. You can I, get I'm it. Like, yeah, yeah but 
I just, I don't know his purpose at all. Like, what is he here for? He's the balance. He's the middle. No, he's annoying. He's the neutral. Mm. (laughs) But like, he's not even neutral because he's like, yeah, I'll give it to you. And you can just like destroy everything and know the power of everything. Like, oh, he did warn them. That doesn't feel neutral. That feels like aiding and abetting. Well, I I feel like, I mean, you have to make the choice and go take it. And then bringing the bringing the light and the dark side holocrons together is a form of balance. Yeah, he's pretty much just like, do what you want. And you're going to have to accept the consequences. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. I I just don't like him. This is my official position. He's a strange character. character. I I can't. Space Um, moves. (laughs) Yeah. I liked that Kanan sent Ezra in there without his lightsaber and said Mm -hmm. he's got to learn to solve problems without it. I thought that was really, like, good because I feel like Ezra does rely a lot on, like, more attack Mm -hmm. and less, like, problem solving. So Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. I thought that was really good. I really liked when they were magnetizing Maul in the show. (laughs) It just, like, made me think of all of our conversations about, like, how he got thrown into a dumpster and like, and scorpion was, droid legs and, and scorpion yes. legs exactly yeah. so basically yeah, i just thought of you guys while they did that it was lovely. <laughs> didn't work very well but they did try i mean it worked at first mm-hmm. i mean it caught him off guard if they yes. had been like more armed or maybe just like more prepared or more able to do something like they could have maybe made something happen there i was also starting i was starting to question i mean if the legs are magnetized would the lightsaber have been magnetized great point on what it's made of I guess. yeah but it, i mean that one's cobbled together from a couple different ones mm-hmm. so yeah. it, i think it really depends mm. great point mm-hmm. um okay Lions here's my <laughs> this note says fuck you bendu where he said <laughs> or perhaps they'll be eaten it's like <laughs> can you not like what what's your problem i mean maybe they'll win maybe they'll lose <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah maybe maybe who knows maybe they'll be eaten he's like i forget did you guys did you guys watch the good place mm-hmm. a little bit of it yeah i didn't he's, i never finished it oh he's neutral janet he's yeah he is but like that's like, useless i don't know oh yeah they will they will or will useless. not you will or will not retrieve the holocron end of conversation mm-hmm. I, or I, do not there is no try <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, I liked that Kanan asked Ezra to forgive himself. Mm-hmm. That was great. About time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that is hard though. Like he it does is. feel super responsible and it is hard to let go of that. Like mm-hmm. I feel for him. Yeah. No, I so it's about like, time yes, for Master. Kanan to tell him that, like whether or not Ezra does it right oh, away. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, but I feel like Kanan also had to come to terms with his injury and like with how his life has changed. And so I don't feel like he could be there for Ezra until now. Right. Um, so I think this was probably the earliest he could do it, which I'm mm-hmm. not saying is right, but I also understand like having to grieve mm-hmm. like the failures of your own body, right. like as a person who's had to grieve the failures of her own body, like right. I can understand like that that takes time and like they don't have a therapist and like how is he supposed to know how to process that? So right. I, yeah, I understand it. Six months, and you, I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah. And also like you can't fill from an empty cup, right? So like- right. If his yeah. cup is empty, he can't be helping Ezra or anyone. Yeah. So he yeah. had to help himself first. Yes. Um, again, why are we seeing these spiders? <laughs> I'm just super done. Okay. <laughs> the <laughs> this note says, Maul is a dick. All yes. capital letters. Yes. When he said, follow the sound of my voice. Yes. <laughs> a fucking blind guy. Like, such piece what of shit. the fuck <laughs> oh my so god he's the king of shade oh it's yeah so, like that so was bad. so unnecessary mm-hmm. that was so also like and then we get into canaan in the airlock mm-hmm. i freaked out i was like yes. this is it like this is how he dies like how is he gonna get out of this one that was horrifying especially to a blind person yes. like who didn't even know it was horrible. Just like the worst kind of person to trick a blind person into going into an airlock. What yes. the hell? So that was horrible. Um, I did laugh when they were sitting on the floor and tandem holocroning just because of our conversations <laughs> about holocroning. <laughs> I was like, this is a really great like mutual sesh right here. 
just bring those holocrons together. Holocron That's with right. me. Mm -hmm. Please, mm -hmm. baby. Just holocron right next to me. Oh my God. Look into my eyes while we do it. Oh my anyways, moving on. I'm just, it's getting too hot in here. Um <laughs> this note just says God bless Canaan. Like yeah. Canaan coming in and saving Ezra from himself basically was like so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And like the fact that Canaan could see him through the holocron, I was just like, oh stop yes. i'm obsessed with yes. you I the love trust them. me was incredible and then i guess like my only question they talked about twin sons so i mean is that yes, like, like a that's a tatooine <laughs> reference right i mean there's a lot of binary sun systems yeah. i mean <laughs> i mean what yeah what uh what systems do we know with twin sons <laughs> Okay, so what would, what would Maul be looking for? What would, yeah, that Maul would be looking for. <laughs> okay, so I'm assuming he's looking for Kenobi. Um, that's my hypothesis for this. Um, and obviously, we know that old Ben is on Tatooine, so there you go. Okay, then we move into episode four. Um, I, I loved the idea of this like academy for pilots, I just thought it yeah. was like really cute and like kind of reminded me of like that disney i think it was disney channel movie sky high or whatever yes i love <laughs> sky high I don't know why maybe they think With of kurt that. russell this is just what i was thinking about the whole time so okay I, I just have to preface this here sabine looks amazing yes. in this episode yes holy <laughs> shit yes like yeah. wow the like full body like black spandex looks mm -hmm. incredible yeah, her looks hair good. looks incredible her face looks she is just like delivering like i do not know how she and wedge antilles did not get it on <laughs> like that was insane and wedge is super hot too yeah wedge is like hot. okay even hottie. like when i couldn't see his face and he like i don't know who this voice actor is but damn he sounded Hot. In fact, I said Wedge Antilles sounds hot. Underline. That is what my note says. So that was great. I loved Ooh, Sabine blowing into the cartridge. Yes. That was, <laughs> that was just gonna blow on his fine. That was just like me with Pokemon Yellow for my Game Boy Color, like all the time, just like all the time. Um, because I didn't really get anything like bigger that needed a cartridge because then i think i went straight to xbox so it was mostly just my my game boy games uh the tie fighter simulation pods were super cool like yes, those were really that cool. felt like something that they could bring to disneyland or to disney world as just like Easily. an experience mm -hmm. that was really really cool i loved that this note just says hey callus <laughs> <laughs> It's Callus true. in the house. Callus. <laughs> Hot Callus needs to stop. Like, I kind of want like a fan fiction of like Callus and Wedge and Sabine, maybe. Just like I, I could go for like a deleted scene. Like, I'm sure there's like an age gap somewhere. Like, I don't know how old Wedge is, and I like I don't want to be weird. He's still like a he's, he's about... around Sabine's age. I'm gonna like, say 18. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. like 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. no, okay, and then we're fine. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Perfect. I'm going to go with 21. Okay. Perfect. Okay, he's 21. Callus is just hot. Doesn't matter how old he is. <laughs> uh, and then, like, Sabine's old enough, right? Okay, sweet. I, I would read that. Now. I think she's Any 18. day of the week, I'm going to read that. Um, Sabine saying, that's cute, was so flirty. <laughs> I nearly died. I wrote, OMG, Sabine, you icon. Yes. <laughs> Sabine will continue to be an icon. She yes. really comes into her own. I really seasons. feel like this episode was like, I understand why people like her now a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I liked her before. Like, I thought she was fine and smart and, like, everything. But this one, she was a badass. Yeah. Like, yes. this was great. Yes. Um, And then my last note just says, Callus, I love you. OMG, the bromance with Zeb. <laughs> 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 that was lovely. Like, I am really glad that episode had some sort of payout here because mm -hmm. it did just feel kind of thrown in. I feel like Rebels does this a lot to me where I'm like, this is a side quest. And then the side quest mm -hmm. pays off in another side quest. Oh, yes. just you wait. I mean, so Wedge excited. really pays off. Like Wedge is, he helps destroy both Death Stars. Like, yes, I mean, Wedge pays yes. off so in Wedge. later in the franchise. There are things in Rebels that people dismiss and Colleen was adamant that they will come back and they always come back. 
I, I'm into it. Like, I really enjoyed these episodes, um, mm -hmm. even though not a whole lot happened. Certainly the holocroning was really big. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that was probably my favorite part. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then seeing Wedge was great and seeing Callus. Mm -hmm. um, it was all good. I'm just still trying to figure out, like, where they're going in the season. Um, like, what, like, the overarching plan is. Yes. Um, Need more so, yeah, I, don't, I don't feel like I know that quite yet. Just, like, it just seems like they're still just recruiting people. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they're, like, losing a lot of pilots, and that feels bad. Um, but I, I'm not sure that there's an overarching plan above just, like, recruit more people. So right. I'm excited to find out more. Yeah. We need to get more of Grand Admiral Thrawn than we'll then we'll Yeah. Know yeah. I mean, I was a little bit surprised like we didn't see him here just because they had just introduced him and then they took him off for two episodes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Rebels does this quite a bit. Like I feel like we didn't see Callus for like a while there. We saw a lot of like Inquisitors, yes. but we didn't see Callus and now we're seeing Callus a lot more, which I'm fine with, trust me. Um <laughs> Yeah, he's hanging yeah, out with was... Price, so we'll see him a lot more. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good to me. All right, well then let's move into our sixth holocron, Conjecture at the Cantina. This is where we ask our own questions about the episodes and explore a little wider Star Wars lore together. Colleen, you mm -hmm. want to kick us off? Yes, so let's start out with what Dave Filoni and crew had to say about these episodes. The Rebels crew and cast emphasized that while Ezra feels the pull of the dark side, it's really important to remember that he's surrounded by a family who loves and supports him, which most Jedi don't have. He's got this a different kind of support system than like knowing your friends and colleagues have your back, which is kind of what the Jedi were. And then Dave Filoni, I loved this. When I heard him do this interview, I'm like, yes, yes, Dave Filoni, please tell us. He stressed that Anakin's downfall wasn't because he was inherently evil. Like he wasn't a bad kid. He wasn't a bad Jedi. It was because he was surrounded by Jedi who lacked the kind of compassion that he needed. They became so selfless that they forgot how to care for individuals. So they were worried about the galaxy and worried about the love of everyone. Instead, they ignored individuals and their needs. That's good. That's, that's actually, I feel like I saw this in a meme, like just over this past week, uh, it was like the Homer Simpson, wow, these fortune cookies are super accurate. And it says, you know, this, the dark side didn't recruit Anakin, the yeah. Jedi like pushed him away. Yes. Yep. And that's a really hard truth to mm -hmm. come by. I mean, we love the Jedi. We love from the original trilogy. It's like, we loved Ben Kenobi. We loved Yoda. And then you realize it's like, well, they fell for a reason. Like this wasn't just Palpatine out here being evil, even though that's what he was doing. Like the Jedi helped bring around their own downfall by not caring about their members. Like for real. In the Clone Wars, they had Obi-Wan fucking pretend to commit suicide and didn't tell Anakin. Like, yep. what? I, I'm just saying, like, anybody who blames Anakin for anything that happened is, like, seriously mistaken. Like, right. he like, was he, a he's child. He's at fault for something. Yeah, he of bears course. some of the blame. He bears some but, of the blame, yeah. but he was a child taken from his home into, like, an extremely abusive system. Yes. Like, I, I mean, I don't really know who can fault him for really, you I mean, can't. personally, I can't fault him for anything that he did. Like, I, I don't know how he could have seen I, it. I, I can fault him for murdering the younglings. Like, oh, yes. like, can we agree on the that? Murders. The murders are not <laughs> the great. Murders. Not, the murders are not great. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not justifying the murders. No. Obviously, like, I was uh, choking out, choking out his wife while she yeah. was like nine months pregnant. Like, that's, um. I mean, I mean, some people are into that, Anders. Can you not kink shame, please? <laughs> uh, when yeah, it leads like, to her yeah. death from sadness. Uh... I mean, I just feel like they she should have had a safe word. I feel like that would have been better. But no, I mean, obviously, I understand like what you're saying. Like, some things were hor even killing the Tuscan Raiders, right? Like, and the dogs, and, and the dogs, dogs, the Tuscan dogs, horrible. I fully agree with that. I just think that like. If we were in Anakin's head, if we were in his brain, like something is misfiring, like something yeah. is wrong yes. that has been programmed in there by the Jedi. Those are like, yes. the, I mean, the kid, like I've said it before, the kid was a slave. He knew nothing. He came from mm -hmm. nothing. And they put these crazy ideas into his head that like, you can't attach yourself to anybody. Right. Like, 
That's horrible. That's a it horrible is. thing to it's put horrible. into the head of a kid. Yep. And that's that another you're... reason why Ahsoka leaves too. She's like, I'm yeah. sure. I can't handle like, this anymore. Who wants to hear that you have to be alone in the universe forever? Right. Well, and then they're like, that's you're horrible. actually together with everyone because the Force connects everyone. And it's like, <laughs> like whatever, Yoda. <laughs> you've been alive for 900 years. Like, fuck you. <laughs> Real. I, I just, I, I really struggle with people who, you know, don't see any goodness Blame. in Annie. Like, oh, yeah. He's such a sweetheart. And oh, all he, has he wants goodness. to do is love. Like, he wants he to love. He just wants to, like, he just wants to love and nobody let him love. Just let the kid love. That's really all it is. Look at how much better Ezra's doing with Kanan. Kanan being like, not just his teacher, but a father figure. Like, mm -hmm. and hugging him, God forbid. <laughs> but oh, yeah. Ezra is also around non-Jedi. Yes. I feel like Anakin was around so many Jedi and like, yes. like Jedi or clones. Mm -hmm. Like, like mm -hmm. Hmm. There was like he around so no. not I a mean, ton. He he gets to be around civilians and things, but I mean when he's growing up, people in a fair. Yeah, no I mean, family like, structure. You're stuck Ezra with all the other Ezra has a family. Ezra yeah. like rooms with somebody. Ezra mm -hmm. like has chores. Mm -hmm. Ezra like has a mother figure yes. and a father figure mm -hmm. and like yeah. experience. It's not like being in the and, cult like, in the Jedi cult. A hundred percent. Where everyone's I mean, your mom and your dad. <laughs> I feel like Anakin was like in the bunker with Kimmy Schmidt like like <laughs> poor guy I just feel so bad so anyway that's, that's, that's basically my true Anakin. it's yeah. so true though they the Jedi oh. take children and because they're easier to indoctrinate yeah and and no and you know he wasn't able to get out and get like deprogrammed and he went crazy and killed people mm -hmm. like that's what happens like yep I mean, for us was and he's exhausted. And, yeah. Like, I, I don't know why anybody's surprised that he went on to be a mass murderer. No. Like, he had the entire profile of a mass murderer. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. I'm surprised that more Jedi didn't, to be a hundred percent. But if you're a baby and you grew up with it, you kind of just are like, all right, this is this how is it how is. it is. Yeah, and that's what the Jedi were hoping for, and why they thought he was too old because obviously he has attachments, and so they're like, well, we can't strip him of those. Now what? I mean, that in itself is such, like, a problematic stance. It's like, oh, we didn't yank him from his family structure young enough. Like, yeah. we didn't steal him from his family. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And we're, like, idolizing these people? That's really fucked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like, yes, you're peacekeepers, but what is the bedrock of your peacekeeping society? Like, mm. Mm -hmm. Another reason why the Republic fell. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, lot of yeah, there's a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. Yay, Rebels. Yeah. It's a kid's show, everyone. <laughs> this <Dang>. is fine. <laughs> okay. My question for you guys is what do you think Maul means when he says he's looking for hope? Mm, big. The concept of hope is such a driving force in the story for our heroes, yeah. but we never hear the villains talk about it unless it's derogatorily or fearing hope. Yeah. So what's Maul talking about? Because he seems like he's thinking hope is a good thing. Well, hope for him, I think, is he's hoping for his own triumph. I mean, he is. He said it when we met him on Malachor, like, the Sith took everything from him. He has gone through a lot of trauma himself, like, in his whole upbringing and the times that he has, in his own kind of warped way, like, had power or things that all just get stripped from him he's looking for his vengeance hope for his own ultimate plan whatever that may be yeah yeah we don't know yet we don't know yet no. what Maul is hoping for I mean we kind of do his main hope is to take out I mean Sidious but he can't he lives he lives, he lives. Yeah, he's going to take the easy route instead of trying to defeat the <laughs> ultimate evil. It's like, I tried that. It didn't work. Yeah, no. <laughs> and he can't defeat Vader, so it's like, hmm. hmm. What can I do? What can I do? I just love how they gave that to Maul. Yeah. Like, especially in an episode when he is so terrifying. Like, he is the embodiment of the boogeyman in this mm -hmm. episode. And then at the end, they're like, they have him say things to Ezra like, I wouldn't have betrayed you. I would have stayed loyal to you, which is true. Like he, in his head, he thinks he is being loyal to Ezra by trying to take him away from his family. Yeah. Because he's got that warped sense of 
mind too. I feel like it's not even so much warped. I feel like everybody feels like the main character of their own story, right? And so mm-hmm. it's like Maul legitimately thinks that he's doing the right thing for himself or for the galaxy or for something. And so like his hope is his victory, which is like Anders said, like, but that that's all of our hope. Our hope is for all of our victories. And sometimes that coincides with a bigger plan of more people or is like in the majority opinion. Mm-hmm. But like, obviously Maul is not like, we know that Maul is a bad guy and that if he's got hope, like for his victory, that's bad for us and for our heroes. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, all, everybody has hope for their own, their own victory or their own like thing, like the thing that's going to make them the main character. Yes. Their driving force. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Molly baby. Aww. Such a good analyzing character. Yeah. He's a creeper. He he oh, really yeah. scared me in this one. I, I can't scary. get on the mall train at, at this point right now. I'm <laughs> freaked out. Oh, I don't blame you. He is he is very scary in this yeah. episode. Yeah. All right. So my question coming out of this episode is do we actually know the last time anyone managed to put the two ho- two holocrons together? Like a Jedi and a Sith holocron? That seems like a pretty a very rare thing to ever have happened. Uh, I think doesn't Bendu say it hasn't happened in a really long time? Yeah. It has I to, feel like it Bendu ha- did it. I feel it like Bendu to, was the last Bendu's one. Like, it like has okay. to have happened. Yes. Because holocrons, despite their like deep force connectivity and everything, they are still a man made structure. Mm-hmm. Whether it's from a Jedi or a Sith. Happening. Well, it must have happened because or else they wouldn't know what happens when you do it, right? Exactly. So Bendu knows. I'm telling you, I think I think Bendu is the culprit here. You think he did it? I think he put them together like one of those like best friend lockets, and he was like, (laughs) "What will this do?" And then he's just like, "Oh fuck, put it back in." And then he was just like, "I'm walking away from everything now." (laughs) I'm out, guys. (laughs) All right. So my my follow up question to that it would be, what would you guys ask it? You have basically access to unlimited mm. knowledge on the internet. That's the, that's the key is that you're not supposed to ask it anything. <laughs> like the, Bendu says, having the absolute knowledge, you can't unlearn it. And that is something that's very scary. Like that's a, it's a monkey's paw situation or an evil gin comes out of a lamp. It's not Robin Williams genie in this situation. Yeah. This is a, it's going to fuck you over kind of answer. So I want to like, know oh, when the winds of winter is coming out. Oh, that's, that's a, a good one. <laughs> but then you can't unlearn that it will never come out. But it's okay, because then I'll yeah, have an answer, and I'll be like, that's I'm not true. waiting anymore. That's true. At least you would know. Yeah, I feel like mm-hmm. asking something that's, like, pretty low stakes is a good good call. Another I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask if, like, Credence is actually a Dumbledore or something. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, yeah, something that, like, we may never get answered now. Yes. I would really like to. Something that I've been like dying to know and just like, mm-hmm. it'd be nice to know. And then I can like walk away. Oh, actually that's not true. I know exactly what I'm asking the holocron. Okay. I literally will haunt everybody until I know who killed JonBenet Ramsey. So that is what I'm asking the holocron. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's kind of cool. Like who actually killed JFK? <laughs> yeah. Like I need to know like cold case murder answers. Mm-hmm. That's what I need. That's what I'm asking the holocron a million percent. Okay. That's a really good one. That is Thank excellent. You. I need to know. If anybody out there has any information, please call your local authorities. I need to know who killed John Bunny Ramsey, or I will be so, unable to rest in peace. Thank the holocrons you. can answer it. I guess I would ask it your question, Anders. When was the last time <laughs> that the two holocrons were put together and what fucking happened? Well played. And Very then well it would played. be like, interesting. I mean... I really want to know what sort of presence is in Kanan's holocron besides the Obi-Wan recording. Because the Sith holocron has um, like Ventress's voice, has a consciousness, but the Jedi one doesn't seem to. But that also feeds into the Jedi are a consciousness and are together and the Sith, there's like one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe oh. we could ask how Palpatine came back. <gasps> Somehow he has returned. How Somehow. has he returned? <laughs> returned what a stupid word no one would say that (laughs) i think to me it's not even like returned it's the somehow (laughs) somehow somehow Mm -hmm. somehow 
Why is it Mr. Magic Bones that we just back? learned about? Yeah, why isn't Mr. Bones back? Damn it! Give us Mr. Bones, God. Yo, give me. Why isn't there a, a gay relationship in Star there's Wars? A dro- there's a droid show coming out at some time on Disney Plus. I want it to be mm-hmm. Roger and Mr. Bones in like a buddy cop show. Just two B ones, <laughs> two B one battle droids. <laughs> I would watch that 100 would absolutely watch that would watch <laughs> all right everybody i think that is going to wrap it up for us today so tune in with us next time as we continue our rebel season three coverage with a mission to ryloth and some very interesting droid action for sarah hopefully sarah will be able to be back with us next week yes until then, please follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us those five-star reviews. Check out our website at bohemiangeekstudies.com, where you can watch all of our episodes. Enjoy Colleen's Book Corner, where she reviews Star Wars literature. And contact us through email and social media. And as always, keep telling other nerdy knights to join us. It really does help. You can also head over to ForgottenEntertainment.com. Check out all the offerings in the Forgotten Entertainment family, including yet another Star Wars podcast where Colleen, myself, and our buddy Daniel uh, just finished up our rewatch of all the films in the Star Wars canon. Mm-hmm. Until next time, Holocron's up. Keep those episodes streaming, and I guess I can see the look on Flo's face. Keep Holocroning, everybody. <laughs> Holocron away, people. <laughs>